Hello, and welcome to Adventure. This is Pappy Popper. I hope you enjoy this deck as much as my family did while building it. Today, brave knights and unfaltering centaurs recreate classic medieval fantasies. We will use all common rarity cards with green and white colors for our build. I believe this deck will work well for newer players. Its creature types look familiar and consistent. Also, we have very few time-dependent spells like instants. Our story begins within the coastal nation of New Banalia. Council leader Alvin Rosecoat creates the Noble Order of Hooves. This cavalry defends House Rosecoat and quietly provides political leverage, anticipating the likely addition of Avens into their government. Our military clan undisputedly spearheads battle on land. A stampede crushes opponents with 40 potential creatures at hand. High value tokens like centaurs quickly flood the battlefield and overwhelm our enemies. Since many of our knights have vigilance, we rarely worry about withholding attackers. To win, play aggressive combat and never fear creature-based removal spells. Usually, we will have a larger board state than the other player. Only Celestnia failed to receive a fresh mechanic in Guilds of Ravnica, the newest set for Magic the Gathering. Instead, Popper gets more cards with Convoke. Have we critical mass for token-based strategies like Soul Sisters to optimize this keyword? Since we place some cards having higher mana costs, we want many lands that come into play untapped. Blossoming Sands is the sole exception. Only decimals prevent a perfect distribution between mana and spells. We have many possible plays in the early game. Some cards accelerate mana and give us an 85% chance to use 4 mana by turn 4. Safe right quest lets us search our library for mana while thinning the deck. It uses either green or white mana. Like House Rose Coat, flyers create possible concerns. Elven archers help defend us while we must bluff combat tricks in hand. Although Deathblade Elite is neither a centaur or knight, it draws out weak defenders. In the late game, this unlikely soldier could repeatedly block large creatures without taking any damage. With 10 one-cost spells and with Blossoming Sands, we have an 84% probability to play something good on turn 1. Again, this opportunity helps encourage new players because they can immediately begin playing the game. Now we see some knights. Each one fills a special role. Steward of Valoran offers green mana. Its vigilance allows us to attack without tapping. Should it survive combat, the druid helps us cast a spell during the second main phase. Cavalry Drillmaster grants plus two power and first strike and pairs well with Deftblade Elite. When this knight enters the battlefield, we use our only main deck combat boost. Therefore, we include a full playset. Centaur Healer is another multicolor creature. The cleric costs three mana, has both three power and toughness, and pads our life total by three. Many Magic the Gathering players consider Therese Nielsen their favorite artist. Here, she illustrates Call of the Conclave. With very few exceptions, 
Popper has no better two mana creature summoning spells without some kind of potential drawback. These centaurs are the first in a long line of tokens. One of our more costly spells includes Gallant Cavalry. When she enters the battlefield, the Vigilant Knight produces immediate reinforcements. Likewise, Call the Cavalry gives us four untapped power across four different creatures for four mana. Tyler Walpole's token literally reflects the beauty of New Banalia. Their architecture frequently includes stained glass, and here it's decorated nobility. We have no artifacts or enchantments. This approach deadens such removal spells held by our opponents. However, we can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Look closely at Sundering Growth. We can add another creature token as well as destroy an artifact or enchantment. Wake the Reflections also uses the Populate mechanic. For a single white mana, we create another Centaur or Knight. Our strategy applies greater tempo than our opponents. While building this deck, I considered many other spells. Some of these possible inclusions were Knights. Coordinated Barrage caused me the most anguish while trimming the main deck, but I cut it because the card may require too many variables. Knights of the Thorn blanks red removal spells and muddies opponent's combat math. However, it may arrive too late to keep pace with a flurry of fiery spells. The Centaur's Death Touch seemed almost redundant because we have Deft Blade Elite. I am not sure we may have been able to reliably use its renown ability either. Finally, travel preparations looked good, especially with its flashback ability. Our strategy encourages a wide army with decent combat powers, and less importantly, on singularly large creatures. What changes might you have made? Let me know in the comments section. We have a very unique sideboard, and much of it builds on statistical probabilities. Our archers and crushing cards give us an 83% chance to stop at least one large flyer by turn 4. The cat combines with Sundering Growth, an either crushing card, to destroy either an artifact or enchantment at the same mathematical rate. Druid's Deliverance nullifies combat damage from creatures and adds yet another token. Finally, three copies of the Shadowy Sultari Lancer helps us push through combat damage, perhaps buffed by Cavalry Drillmaster. Opponents will certainly target this otherworldly creature with their removal spells. Soltari Lancer provides a sideboard option against a surprisingly tireless tribe, too. At the time of this recording, our deck costs 1.5 tickets for Magic the Gathering Online. Paper products will likely cost just under $16 US. Again, these relatively low costs could invite new players into the game. I ask my viewers and Wizards of the Coast to support local game stores whenever possible. Recently, I threw down the gauntlet in true medieval fashion. In the near future, I will play this deck against Jason, perhaps better known as T2TKS from MTG Deck Techs. He will use Jade Skywalker's Mono White Soldiers. Click the info card for a video link to that deck. Wish me luck as I bravely represent House Rosecoat in glorious battle. Later, I will upload our match to my channel playlists. Thank you for watching. 
it means a lot to my kids and to me. Consider subscribing for more content about the best MTG format. Please leave a family-friendly comment below. Until next time, this is Pappy Popper, encouraging you to be uncommonly magical.